Right, so we're, we're asking here to finish the hour, what can we still conclude with this norm about unit, uniticity, I don't think that's a word, um, I'm going to make it a word, uniticity. Um, what can we conclude about uniticity and irreducibility with this norm? And you're saying that 135 is still a true statement in this polynomial ring the same way it was over z adjoin radical d. And why is that the case? Because the multiplicativity statement is true for this. And the same proof that you offered for 135 uh, about a half an hour ago should also work here. After all, if p is a unit, then that must mean that there is another polynomial, q, such that p times q is equal to 1. And these p's and q's are polynomials. But just taking the norm of both sides, we get that the norm of p times the norm of q must equal the norm of 1, which is equal to 1. But for this norm, norm of p equals 2 raised to the power of degree of p, what kind of numbers do we get out of 2 raised to the power of degree of p? Where do those numbers live? They're integers. They're better than rational numbers. They're integers, for sure. And so I have a product of two integers, which is equal to 1. And that implies, just as you concluded in 135, that the norm of p has to be a unit in z. And according to result 27 in the course, that consists of just plus or minus 1. In fact, there's something even stronger that we can say here. Plus or minus 1 is too permissive. What, in fact, do we know that the norm of p must be in this example if p is a unit? It's got to be plus 1. Because after all, there is no way for 2 raised to the something to be equal to negative 1, unless that something is an imaginary number. But we won't go there, because that's not for this class. Um, at least not now. It's probably for a complex variables class, but not for this one. So yes, so 135 still holds because the multiplicativity property holds. But now what about that 139? Can we make a conclusion about irreducibility of a polynomial based on the norm of that polynomial being a prime number? What would you say? So there's sort of two statements here, right? One that goes from left to right, and the other that goes from right to left. And they're both potentially distinct from one another. Um, but I did hear your group in the back talk about the left-hand implication. So suppose that n of p is a prime number. What are the options? Yeah, after all, n of p is 2 raised to something, 2 raised to the degree of p. But if that's a prime number, what are the only powers of 2 that are prime? 2 and 1. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm being a little bit, I'm double dealing a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to have to back up a step and, and clarify. Is 1 a prime number? Whether it's a prime number depends on your definition of prime, and we haven't in our class proffered a, an official definition of what a prime integer is. Um, usually 1 is left out for the sake of convenience. Only mathematicians' convenience uh, leaves out 1 as a prime number. Um, but in some ways, 1 is trivially prime. Uh, it's definitely irreducible, according to our definition of irreducibility, um, because the only way to factor the number 1 over the integers is to factor it out a 1 or factor out a negative 1. So it's definitely irreducible. Maybe that's enough uh, for us here. Um, so you're saying that the only polynomials which are going to have a prime, or let's say irreducible, norm are going to be those polynomials that have degree 0 or have degree 1. Are all such polynomials irreducible? Why not? Give me an example of one that's not irreducible. T squared? Nine. Just the number nine. The number nine. Oh, OK, sorry. Um, and you're saying nine is not irreducible? It's equal to nine. Remember when I said irreducibility really matters, irreducible where? Take a look at where we are considering irreducibility here. We're talking about irreducibility over the rationals. So the factorization 9 equals 3 times 3 doesn't count 
because the threes are both units in the rationals. In Q. Because they're constants and non-zero. Right? Because three is, we can divide by three. And so factoring a nine into three times three is not that interesting because we could factor anything into three times something just by dividing it by three. Because three is a unit in the rationals, where it's not in the integers. Um, 4t plus 2. Likewise. So there's a polynomial of degree 1. And we have a factorization of it. It's 2 times 2t plus 1. But 2 is a unit. But 2 is a unit. So that factorization doesn't count, again, over q adjoined t, where the units consist of every non-zero constant polynomial. So I, I guess I want to leave you to think about, over the weekend, whether this is true. Is it always true that if the degree of a polynomial is 0 or 1, that it must be, as a polynomial over the rationals, irreducible? Is that a correct statement or is it not a correct statement? So that's, let's call it conjecture A. And for the other direction, let's call that conjecture B. Is every irreducible polynomial one of them that has a prime norm? Maybe we can answer that one now so I don't have to leave you hanging on it. What do you think? All right, what's an example of an irreducible polynomial that doesn't have a prime norm? Sure. T squared plus 5 is irreducible over the rationals, but its norm is equal to 4. So conjecture B is false. But think about conjecture A over the weekend, uh, and we'll, we'll pick up with that and talk about irreducibility of cubics on Tuesday.